Dave Stevens Drawn to Perfection is a documentary about the life and work of illustrator, writer, Dave Stevens. This is uh, an amazing documentary and exploration of the artist, Dave Stevens, who was integral, not just, you know, creating the Rocketeer comic book in the 80s, but also uh, in the development of the Rocketeer movie of the early 90s. This, this documentary goes into incredible detail about Dave's life, the fact that Dave was so committed to his work, a thing that was often repeated in the documentary uh, when people spoke about Dave Stevens is, is how much he would look at his own work and say, it's not done. It's not done. It's not perfect. It's not there yet. And I was blown away by this doc. Um, Dave Stevens, you find out through the course of watching the documentary, uh, you'll probably already know this, that he passed away tragically. Uh, I'm not going to say how or the, um, I, you need to, you need to see this documentary. You you definitely need to see this documentary. I just, I, I learned a lot of things about Dave Stevens. I didn't know. I learned that Thomas Jane, the actor, Thomas Jane is a huge fan of Dave Stevens. They even go so far is uh, far to um, interview Brink Stevens which was Dave Stevens' ex-wife. And Brink Stevens, you know, she's a scream queen. And um, she uh, contributed a lot to Dave's life. And he also, uh, he drew her quite a bit. Many drawings Dave Stevens did of Brink, uh, Brink Stevens. This is an incredible documentary. And everyone who's either an aspiring comic artist or an aspiring comic writer needs to see this the level of dedication that Dave Stevens had towards his work is incredible, absolutely incredible. I learned so much about uh, about Dave and just the people he surrounded himself with, how much he was loved by those people in his story. And it brought back memories for me of discovering his work at a comic book store in the 80s and you know, my buddy Scott at Dave's Comics in Royal Oak, Michigan, saying, dude, you got to read this. It's amazing. Uh, and the doc is an incredible work. It's um, archival footage mixed with a lot of footage um, of newer interviews that were done. But it's not one of those talking head documentaries. It is chock full of artwork by Dave Stevens, including unpublished artwork you've never seen. I'm excited today to bring on the director, uh, Kelvin Mao is here, and one of the producers of the doc, Rob Chatlin is here. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I'm Chris Gore. This is uh, Alan Ng, my partner. Yeah, hi. Crying hi. here. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Chris. Did you just name drop Dave's Comics in Royal Oak? Yeah, I did. That's where I, I grew up. There. I used to go there all the time as well. <laughs> that was my comic book store, Dave. Dave Hutsley, who's like this sort of beefy. He was basically a biker. Yes. This tough guy. So, okay. So that was my comic book store, like in high school and college. And then I followed him to Ann Arbor as well, where he had a shop. Yeah. It was Dave yeah. and then classic movie in uh, Livonia. Wow. Well, let me just say how amazed and impressed I am with this documentary. Blown away at how great it is. It's, um, I mean, nobody goes about making an archival documentary to get rich. Uh, and, and, you know, ask, ask their butlers, they would confirm uh, uh, but, but it is like an arduous process having worked on archival documentaries myself from getting clearances to getting all the, all the footage and video. And this just brought back, it was like reliving like my eighties, like maybe just want to go to a comic book store. So question for both of you. I mean, feel free both to answer. How did this project start? You, you must have known Dave. And obviously, if you didn't know him, you were affected by his work. How did this project come about? It was a pandemic project. First of all, Kelvin was friends with Dave for the last 10 years of Dave's life. And he would tell stories. And at some point during the pandemic, we were playing poker online. And the idea said, hey, let's do a project together. We were talking about doing a documentary. And it's like, Dave Stevens, that'd be perfect. And between Kelvin and Robert Windham, the executive producer, we said, yeah, that's going to work. 
and then it all came together. We had a pandemic to do pre-production, and then once the vaccine <laughs> came around in 2021, we were able to start doing interviews. And with Kelvin knowing most of her cast and having deep connections in the comic and comic art industry, we did 35 interviews over the course of a year and a half. Wow. I, you know, just I'll say, um, I think a lot of people use the pandemic to work on a project. Kelvin, like, that's a lot to do, even though, I mean, like, first of all, I'm impressed. So you made it in like under three years. <laughs> that's crazy. Well, we, we only had one speed. We all sort of work at one. We're all three of us are sort of hammer down guys. So like, um, you know, once we got the ball rolling, it was like, oh, let's just do it every weekend, you know, two a day. What can we do? And, you know, it became a personal challenge. To, to see how how we could do this and we did have a template uh, rob chatlin had just finished editing another documentary with a lot of uh, interviews and so uh you know we we did have some experience in that respect uh robert windham and i did not have that experience but uh you know but yes we were both big fans of, of dave stevens and, and i was lucky to know him and and a lot of the people that are in the documentary so it all just sort of coalesced in this you know very very serendipitous pr project and, and it all started with I think it was at the end of the game where we were just sitting around still on the Zoom because no one had anything better to do, you know, in the middle of the night, you know, after a poker game. And he said, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, yeah, that's sort of how it all started. So, um, yeah, I mean, I definitely tried myself to be productive uh, during the, the pandemic. And, and you know, what, what else was there to do? Um, but um, it was a real, you know, gelling of three different personalities. And that's what you're seeing up there. Um, and we, you know, Dave Stevens himself, you know, obviously had a work ethic for geared toward perfection. So we tried to channel that as best we could, although we knew we would, we would definitely fall short of his standards. Uh, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping that he, wherever he is, is looking down, at least getting a good laugh out of this. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, but like I said, yes, I, 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 we tried real hard and hopefully that, that, that shows up on the, on the screen. Well, We've it's, come it's close. <laughs> I actually rewatched Rocketeer and we we're talking earlier about, you know, a lot of people have maybe some issues with modern Disney. That to me is like a perfect film, the Rocketeer, uh, whatever problems you might have with it. Uh, it, it, it is to me a perfect film. It, it's uh, it's amazing period piece. The score is so brilliant. The fact that like also so many of Dave's designs really translated so accurately into the film, you don't, get to see that too often but can you tell me like what was what were some of the things that surprised you over the course of making this documentary well i mean the one thing was everybody we interviewed especially his old friends and his artistic colleagues all would immediately tell us oh if you were you know if anyone deserves a documentary it's dave stevens and that was something where to see that sort of um, sort of respect and reverence that, that his peers held for him you know, you know, you sort of know about that as a fan, you know, like I started all of this out as a fan. I met David Stevens in 1992 at San Diego Comic-Con as a pure fan and then, you know, got to be friends with him, you know, several years later. Um, you know, it, it, I guess part of the real surprise was there weren't any surprises. You keep waiting to see something else. And Dave had a tremendous sense of artistic integrity, but also in his whole life. There's a guy art directing his own life as if someone is watching this as a movie that he was if anything we found out he was more everything that we thought he was through the interviews um which is to me you start to understand why other artists really admire him because he was like living that that ethic that he had that aesthetic you know trying his best um even uh right to to the end you know um that was something that um is is part of why he's so unique and that's what we were trying to get across, not just, you know, the movie and the, and, the, and, the, and the artwork. And there are a lot of great artists out there. But this was a very unique person with, like, a lot of contradictions, just a, a combination of, of things you don't normally see combined in, in one human being. And then that was the, the, the that was the, the you know, um, tightrope we were trying to walk. So to try and try and do that without getting too inside baseball. Well, uh, I just, I met Dave Stevens also at San Diego Comic-Con and the thing that struck me, he had amazing hair. He just said, it's like, perfect, not, not, not a hair out of place, that guy. He was really, um, and he was also strikingly good looking, you know, he, uh, uh, he certainly, I think had an effect, had an effect on, on women I know. 
Uh, and you even talk about that in the doc. Like, I really love that you explored um, uh, uh, your know, personal aspects, obviously, but um, so much about him and, and it just his dedication. We have a lot of comments and people uh, have questions in the chat. So, um, so would you mind answering some questions? We've got like almost 500 on. people on this live. Sure, let's, 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 let's bring it on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Solomon Thornton says, I grew up watching Rocketeer. Love Timothy Dalton and Jennifer Connelly. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for doing this. Uh, and then um, Portland182 says, Hi, Rob and Kelvin. How did you get a hold of so much unpublished <laughs> art? Uh, Dave Stevens didn't draw. Uh, he wasn't prolific. He wasn't in Jack Kirby, but he, you know, he spent a lot of time on each individual piece. And we're, I'm lucky that I, I've been friends with Dave's family uh, for, for quite a while. And you know, uh, myself, along with another close friend of Dave Stevens, uh, Dave Mandel, who's a well-known um, collector, uh, we sort of helped them, you know, uh, manage the estate after they passed. But Dave had a very sort of compartmentalized personality, so his family wasn't that aware of a lot of what was going on in his professional life um and and um but but through that that relationship the first thing that we did when we decided to do this was to call uh, his sister jennifer who's the current uh executive of the state and and say look look we want to do this together and and make this authorized and 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 she opened up her house and we you know we got to go we went you know two days over there you know and and just shot everything and and a lot of people a lot of people were very generous about uh sending in letting us know they had work you know his, you know like his his ex-wife Brink stevens had some things we hadn't seen before um but you know a lot of people had gifts things that dave had drawn for them that wow. hadn't wow. seen the light of day or at least you know outside of them physically bringing the, the item somewhere or, or you're visiting them so that was a lot of it and, and there's still stuff out there. You know, the one thing that we joked about was the second it was going to be over, someone was going to send us something. Right, Rob? Yeah. yeah. Well, Patrick Lemire says, remember, kids, if Dave Stevens didn't write it, it's not Rocketeer. <laughs> and then uh, Jeff Tucker at Tucker Time says, ask them about Dave Stevens' relationship with Betty Page. Um, did he did he know the real Betty Page? Like, he absolutely did. Yeah. He absolutely became friends with Betty uh helped her out the film goes into some of these details that dave when dave learned that she was alive you know lifestyles of the rich, rich and famous as robin leach said hey we're betty page is still alive dave then reached out through connections and eventually became friends with her a very dear friend and through you know through the end of his life and there were so many great stories that unfortunately did not make the film some of them very funny uh, because Dave was very protective of her and basically kept a lot of outsiders away from her. And Betty also liked some of that privacy as well. But it was, it would have been nice to have seen them together. That's our one regret is we do not have a photo of them together because they don't exist. We have a lot of questions um, and comments here. Murdoch86 says, loved the Rocketeer as a kid, used to make my own jetpack <laughs> using two liter pop bottles and a belt. Well, that's pretty funny. Um, what editing software did you use? We have a lot of filmmakers that watch the show. Okay, I used uh, Avid Media Composer. I've been on Avid since the 90s. That's all I know and that's all I'll use. Awesome. And are you thinking, Portland182 asks, are you thinking about a book of the documentary featuring his art? Best seller for sure. Is there- uh, It's funny that you should mention that. We There is, this there was a project that was sort of in the works before the documentary that we had some uh, benefited a little bit from the research of you know there was an our, our book of dave stevens work called brush with uh brush with, brush with passion um that came out in 20 2008 at the end of 2008 uh, at the end of the year he passed away and uh his sister has always wanted to do sort of an updated version with better scans and more you know more of it fleshed out because you know dave himself couldn't finish that book so there's that that's a project that's always you know been on the in the background uh, the idw would also love to do you know it's it's a lot of work though we require a lot more writing uh, because you know it's not just art we'd want to have essays and those sorts of things in there you know uh tom siebert has a question here uh sort of a two-part question why was there so little rocketeer comics from dave stevens even after the movie 
nothing. And then was the second Rocketeer movie going to be the New York City story? Um, why was there so much? Well, you know, I think he, uh, you know, I think I think the the, the the filmmaking business is is tough, you know, and I think it, it was fatiguing for him. And I think he was looking at other other projects. He, he did. We go into some detail, you know, he didn't have other projects and things he wanted to do. Uh, and I think he he it was a standard. He, he held himself. Sort of, the more fans uh, sort of, you know, held him in regard his art, I think the higher the bar was in his own mind. Because he did the first few the first few issues of the original story in a relatively short period of time for him, uh, but that was when no one else was looking. He was just there doing it himself, you know, in his studio on La Brea. So, I would say that he wanted. He may have come back to it later. I'd like to think he would have come back to it, but that he wanted to do other things. And as far as the second work, tear story being the movie, I think what was it? Rob Joe said that there was a. Uh, both Danny and Joe said they had a couple options for story. The New York Adventure would have been not a direct adaption, but the basis for something that would be a part of the story. But it never really got as far as a script, unfortunately, because Disney did not pursue the sequel. They are talking about going to other periods of time, World War II, the Cold War, those sorts of things, too, as, as, as sort of interesting settings to have a, you know, the next movie. And, uh, Lumber has a comment here. It says Dave incorporated such a great combination of classic and modern comic art styles. His cover art really made you want to open the book and then go back and stare at his cover. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then um, uh, we're, we're good. unfortunately we got to wrap it up uh, quickly. I know you guys got to go, but we've got good questions on the end here. So let's see if we can get to them. Um, William Joseph Dunn says, did you find any animators who worked with him when he was working for Doug Wildey? We interviewed a couple people from Hanna-Barbera. Mark Evanier was there, Scott Shaw, um, Doug Wildey, you know, super influential from Johnny Quest. And Bill Ray. Bill Ray was there momentarily. Bill Ray. Uh, Darrow, Jeff Darrow on the periphery, I believe. At the end, uh, I the think. Hanna-Barbera story. The Hanna Barbera story is, you know, that's a documentary or three of its own. God, well, like just Bill Ray, like... bring up Bill Ray. Bill Ray was one of the first people I met when I moved to Los Angeles. Like, just like he was the three D guy. Like he, he's fr- oh god, your movie. Just Ren talked- Stimpy, right? Ren Stimpy, yeah, he was the it, background guy. His like he he like I don't know, just like your movie brought back all these memories for me, where I just was like, oh my god, like. I remember that. And I remember going to Comic-Con in the early 90s when it was this tiny thing. It was not uh, Comic-Con now. People don't understand. It's kind of crazy. Uh, but um, we'll wrap it up with like a couple really good questions here from Fletcher Williams says, um, two-part question. Will you be, Fletcher Williams asks, will you be showing the documentary at any like cons, Comic-Cons? And are you planning re- on releasing on demand? How can we see it? You want to see it? No, yeah. <laughs> it will be available digitally on Friday, December 2nd. iTunes Store, Amazon, Google Play. And you can actually pre order on Apple, on the Apple Store now. Yes, pre order, please, and help us get our numbers. Please pre order. <laughs> Here's my plug. <laughs> uh, look, a lot of a lot of documentaries that are, I, I've had friends that like their documentary like shoots up to number one. Like you just never know. But this thing I'm telling you, Dave Stevens drawn to perfection. Pre-order this movie, see it. If you're around, then it'll bring back memories. It'll give you a newfound appreciation for Rocketeer and just um, give you just an appreciation for Dave as an artist and how he was able to just bring so much passion. I kind of felt like. Um, the way he went about it, it's not done. It's not done. He was just, he really was. That's why the, the title of your film is so perfect. And he was a perfectionist, perfectionist. Um, and it showed and in the work. We tried to come close. We tried <laughs> to honor him in that way. Well, the movie's available for pre-order now. It is out this Friday, December 2nd. Get it, see it. Um, and I hope you do end up doing some screenings at comic conventions because it would be great to have a, a long, even longer form conversation. Uh, We're definitely like, open to it. You know, if people want to have us out and whatnot. We, I mean, I go to a lot of conventions anyway, so I'll be there probably. So if anyone wants to do something, you know, that's that would we would be totally open to like, you know, we can um, talk about this stuff and Dave, you know, pretty much forever. So, you know, um, 
We have hours yeah. of story. Well, if you're in LA, LA Comic Con is this weekend at the convention center. Alan and I will both be there. Uh, so we may have to step out. in. We are definitely here. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Kelvin and Robert, so great to talk to you today. Thank you so much for joining us on the Film Threat Livecast. I appreciate it. Thank you Thanks both. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so Take care. Yeah. Congrats Bye. on the movie. Amazing Thank job. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks. Take care. Bye now.